So I'm Dr. Clee Bessel. I'm with the uh, Southwest College of Naturopathic Medicine Pain Relief Center. I'm a medical doctor. I went to school at Creighton University in Omaha. Uh, then I did a surgical internship in San Francisco at St. Mary's Hospital. I then went into anesthesia. I did my residency at uh, University of Arizona Phoenix campus. And when I graduated from that, I started practice in Mesa, Arizona. I had the opportunity during that training to work with uh, some of the pioneers in pain management, Richard Derby, who uh, was an anesthesiologist when I was a surgery intern. And uh, he was doing some weird stuff and I decided I wanted to do weird stuff too. So <clears throat> when I started practice in Mesa, Arizona, I worked with uh, another a pioneer in the pain industry, a Tom Grady, who had done some very interesting things. Uh, back in the 80s when I started, uh, pain management was not well defined. We didn't have a lot of the medications that we have now. We didn't uh, have the techniques defined. Uh, we didn't even know some very basic things that are obvious today, like where the median, uh, medial branch ran to the facet joint. So we were open to trying all kinds of things, and one of the things I tried early on was uh, some products from Heal, which is a line of homo homotoxicologic products. Uh, Tremiel and Zeal are the ones we'll talk about today. Uh, Tremiel is primarily in my mind for acute uh, injury inflammation. Uh, zeal is for more chronic uh, rheumatoid, osteoarthritic type of uh, problems. So there have been lots of studies over the years. Uh, homotoxicology has been in existence for all of this century and most of last century. So the reason that I got into it was that uh, I was doing pain management uh, in an allopathic setting and I had an endocrinologist who was adamant I not give steroids to any of his diabetic patients. He would just go ballistic whenever their blood sugars uh, went up above 200, which is common when you do a steroid epidural or steroid trigger points in a diabetic patient that's not very well controlled uh, and is not on a good diet. So I searched for something else that would be uh, equally as efficient and uh, efficacious and not too expensive uh, to give these patients. And I was able to actually have insurance pay for the injections. I wasn't using them in a prolo sense at that time, just in their anti-inflammatory uh, capability. And I found them to be almost as effective as corticosteroids. Their uh, mechanism of action is different. Their length and their onset is different. You get an initial effect, but a lot of times you need to repeat it. But then at seven or eight days, according to the current studies, uh, they surpass the other modalities. Um, the insurance modality isn't really set up for that, so you can't see a patient every day and inject them. Uh, so you do the best you can, uh, usually with muscle strains, ligamentous strains, um, conditions like that, uh, acute injury, one injection will suffice and then maybe a week or two later you'll repeat it. Um, and I've had patients get very good results and be very satisfied with those results. Today, usually I separate out insurance from non-insurance. If I want to do prolotherapy, prolotherapy is basically just a uh, dextrose solution, which may or may not contain other things. Uh, Medinatura's protocol for that is one-to-one, uh, -one basically, and, and that's kind of strong. So you'd use a CC of 50 D50, along with a cc of tremeal. So the tremeal vials are 2.2 mils, so you would use 2.2 mils of uh, dextrose. 
I find a lot of people uh, that causes a little bit too much inflammation. I like to stick below 20% and the dextrose, whatever the total solution is. The way they can accomplish that easily is just to add more local. And my own personal take on local is that I like to mix uh, lidocaine with marcaine. I get a quicker onset, a longer uh, lasting effect, and it also tends to balance the pH. Uh, lidocaine is uh, usually an, a pH of 5.5, marcaine is a pH of 8.4. You mix the two together in equal molar amounts, you get a pH that's somewhere around 7, and it has not been studied that I'm aware of, but I'm optimistic that that reduces some of the chondrotoxicity that we see with local anesthetics. So much like uh, PRP, I'm sorry, much like prolotherapy, I use Tremiel and Zeal for PRP, which you'll see later today uh, in this video. I use uh, Tremiel most commonly with uh, stem cells and uh, also with the uh, amniotic products. And I, it doesn't matter whether I'm using uh, bone marrow, which tends to be more inflammatory and uh, they have more pain afterwards, or whether I'm using adipose derived stem cells, uh, which has less postoperative pain related to the injection, but more related to the liposuction. So I use pretty much the same formula when I'm doing the uh, stem cell treatments as well as the PRP. I'll use uh, one cc of my uh, PRP or stem cell uh, product and then I'll use a cc of my Tremiel Zeal uh, combination with local anesthetic and sometimes a B12 and folic acid. Uh, if I'm doing epidural uh, treatments, I usually leave out the folic acid and the B12. So to recap, uh, there's, there's a variety of uh, bone marrow uh, stem cell preparations. Uh, perhaps the easiest one is to just get uh, 20 or 30 cc's of uh, bone marrow from the iliac crest. Of that, about 20 of it's probably just blood. You then spin it down, much as you would PRP. You can use a, a kit that filters out the, any bone spicules and the, certainly the white cells and, and the red cells, knowing that you're going to lose some of the stem cells when you do that, but also knowing you'll, you'll have less inflammation overall. So not directly into that uh, preparation, whether it's adipose or bone marrow, but afterwards, in other words, I flush the syringe with the Tremiel Zeal uh, local anesthetic solution. The last time this happened in flare up, I was actually moving, and I had a box above me that fell, and then it fell onto my shoulder. Okay. And so then that time I used some homeopathic arnica to be able to deal with the... What was the original front. injury? Original injury, I was tackled um, while we were actually playing flag football, so we had no gear. And it was a, just a perfect tackle right at the waist, lifted me up, and we landed on my shoulder, and it popped out completely. Collarbone was sitting on top of my shoulder, and, and had no use of my arm. You said you had an external component at one point? Uh, yeah, this is still anterior and a little bit superior compared to the other one. And it's both palpable and visible up here. You mark the points. And so okay. Was it tender when I pushed on it? Only a little. <clears throat> yeah. Not like the... Uh... Mm -hmm. But every once in a while, I will feel pressure build up on it, and I'll feel it uh, do a release. And then afterwards, can, I usually... Can you it. release it by pulling back your shoulder? And... Not usually. It's too tight. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay. All right. Um, so have you ever tried Tremiel for it before? I have not. Or Zeal? Mm -mm. This will be the first time. Okay, so uh, today we're going to inject uh, your coracoid ligaments, other ones that go to the acromion and the okay. ones that go to the clavicle. 
we looked at your films. Um, your MRI, unfortunately, didn't take the right slices, so we couldn't see exactly what we wanted. But your motion films, where we loaded the arm and pulled the joint apart, showed clearly that you had uh, movement, a separation of the joint under load. So we know that your AC joint is uh, separated. Okay. Um, because it is chronic and you just have acute flares, uh, there's probably been a lot of repair, a lot of scarring in it. Um, so our options are to use uh, prolotherapy. Mm -hmm. um, we could use uh, PRP or we could use some uh, bone marrow stem cells or we could use some uh, amniotic uh, product. I th was thinking the most cost effective uh, method for you given that it's probably ligament of separation would be PRP, which in my mind I think of when I need regenerative capacity and glue. Okay. So Tighten uh, things back up. Tighten things up, put them together. Um, so if, it, if it's a complete separation, which yours isn't, a gluing two ends that aren't together probably is not going to accomplish anything. In that event, you probably want to speak to a surgeon about bringing it together. Okay. And they have a variety of ways of doing that. But in your case, I think PRP is a, is a good uh, option. And then we'll use the zeal and the tremeal to help control any inflammation that goes along with it. Because it's a chronic problem, we use zeal. Mm -hmm. But because the addition of uh, PRP, which can be inflammatory, uh, we don't want that inflammation to get out of control, so we put the tremeal in there to deal with the acute component and the zeal to deal with the chronic component. Okay, uh, and what about anti-inflammatories for, uh, for me should taking them? Avoid them. Okay. Um, I don't have a big problem with the fish oil mm -hmm. or the turmeric or Boswellia for that matter, but I think you should avoid non-steroidals like ibuprofen, naproxen. And if you do can have uh, much discomfort in the next two or three days, I would use the Tremeal cream. Okay. The topical? The topical. Okay. Or the gel. I've seen those around. So anything, any questions or should we proceed? Uh, no, I, I, I've done a little bit of research on them. I think PRP would, would do good and um, you've answered my questions about any other supplementation stuff, so sounds good.
for about 10 minutes. So, blood goes in one chamber, balance tube goes in the other chamber, lock it down, and run it at 2950 RPMs for 10 minutes. Plasma on the top layer is we call platelet core plasma because it's sorted by density. So the bottom of that yellow fluid layer is going to have most of the platelets in it. Oh wow! So okay. we take the top part off. We can save that. There's applications for that in like aesthetics and different things. If you want to have a PRP facial, for example, they could have done that with, with that stuff. Um, so what's left in there now is some plasma. There's a layer of platelets, so what I'm going to do is gently agitate the tube a few times to resuspend the platelets. I'm going to use this plug to transfer that plasma out. You can tell a little bit difference of color. The platelet rich plasma is a little bit more opaque, a little bit darker than the platelet core. But okay. that's what we're going to use. Let's treat the shoulder. We got about a little over six cc's of that, and we'll be adding the uh, chromium and zeal to that. Awesome. So we're getting ready to drop our uh, chromium and zeal. This is a chronic and acute uh, recurring problem with them shoulder separation. As we discussed previously, uh, I always use a filter needle to eliminate the possibility of any glass fragments for the vial. So we'll take a total of 4 cc's, 2 of Tremiel. It comes in a vial of 2.2 cc's, as does the Zeal. cells from a relatively non-sterile area to a sterile area, we use a little uh, 
much more about transfer. Very handy. It just allows us to plug right in. This is PRP, which we've obtained from the patient. How many cc's of uh, blood did we draw? About 22. About 22. And then we just used a standardized kit um, to separate out the plasma, the platelet-rich plasma. And we have a total of 6 cc's of the PRP. And if I could have a little local So if we were doing prolo rather than uh, PRP, we would use uh, pretty much equal amounts of dextrose to tremeal, a one-to-one -one ratio. And then the, uh, the homeopath that taught me years ago how to do this, he also suggested I always use folic acid and uh, B12. That is not Medi Natura's take on it, uh, but they're relatively benign. I use unpreserved compounds. They felt it activated. Um, sometimes you want to succuss it. It's just a way of mixing it. As uh, Tremiel and Zeal are primarily uh, nanomolecular, it helps spread the energy around. If you just suppress it a little bit, 10 tabs is probably sufficient. And then I just use a little bit of uh, equal amounts of uh, marcaine, 0.75%, and lidocaine, 1%. I feel it helps balance the pH, uh, it stings less, and also, I hope, is less chondrotoxic. So we'll go ahead, as we discussed earlier, we have a, can I have a clear drink? Yes. Uh, we have an AC, chronic AC separation. From the imaging, I, in the exam, I believe it's a grade two. He also has a subscapularis inflammation at the insertion on the humerus, sorry if that tickles, and some uh, supraspinatus tendonitis just below the acromion. It's common when you have an ASIC separation for the uh, bones to reposition slightly, just enough to narrow the canal. So, <clears throat> a word about marking the site after your exam, before you go in the room to do, are we still recording? Oh yeah, it's over. Okay. Is that you should always do it. I didn't do it in this case, and I ended up draping the wrong shoulder because I was busy talking and not thinking about it. So, even in your office, it's a good idea to mark. So, we're going to, this is a fluoroscope, a GD9900. And there you see the, I use the needle as a pointer, you see the acromion there. You see the distal end of the orbicular, or clavicle. And over here, the coracoid process. Can you go towards it just a little bit so we can get that more on the field? And yeah, that's the coracoid process. As you know, the coracoclavicular ligaments come off here and go up to the clavicle there. And let's see if I can do a better job. There. And then the acromioclavicular comes from the acromion to the coracoid right about there. 
And then, of course, you have the local ligaments, the AC ligaments, uh, right at the AC joint. You can see that his clavicle is rotated up. What you can't see from this projection is that it's also rotated posterior. And to me, that suggests a, a grade two separation. It also moves under load. Uh, we could probably demonstrate that. Okay, so if you'll just pull down on his arm, let wait. Okay, now. See, it doesn't move too much. This is a chronic injury. So I'm going to start with. AC joint injection. We just use a little no sting here, which is a very dilute lidocaine. It's buffer. And uh, of course, gives you your local without a lot of uh, stinging and burning. And you can feel the ligament as you go through it. I realize a lot of you physicians doing this won't have the advantage of a fluoroscope in contrast to guide your injections. Fortunately, you can palpate just about all of these structures. I'm going to introduce a little bit of the PRP, about three quarters of a cc. See it spreads the contrast. You okay? Mm -hmm. Is it causing much discomfort? A little bit. Not too much though. So I can tell by the difficulty injecting that he has a bunch of scarring going on there. Now I'm going to go ahead and put in the Tremil uh, Zeal just to flush the syringe or the uh, needle, and to give him a little local for Now because we don't actually see the ligaments, going to use my sense of touch just as you would do if you're doing this without fluoroscopic guidance and just when I feel the needle hit the ligament then I stop. An easy way to do that is go ahead and hit the acromion process with the end of the needle see it starts to spread down the ligament. And because everything we're injecting is a fluid, it'll spread along the ligament. And I'm going to do about a cc of the PRP in each area. And about the same amount of the Tremil Zeal solution. Other than in a really big patient, you can probably do this with uh, about an inch and a half long needle. Did you feel kind of a deep ache there yeah. with that? Okay. Yeah. yeah, they can tell you when you're there, they'll feel a deep ache. And I'll go ahead and inject there. And of course, if you're doing this without 
image guidance, you want to uh, take the needle out and reposition it more medially. Uh, because I am using a fluoroscope, I can palpate the clavicle and just move my needle over to the right spot at the attachment of the other coracoclavicular ligament. You see it spread down a lot of the ligament there. Did you get as deep an ache on that one? Not as deep, but it's still there. Still there? Yeah. It's when it, with a grade two, it's usually the lateral coracoclavicular ligament that is strained or partially torn. on the coracoid. I'm going to get their attachments of the uh, supraspinatus and the subscapularis to the humerus. Kind of show me the bicycle groove in the humerus. So that's good. So right here is where the uh, lower portion of the bicycle groove is. And as you know, the subscapularis attaches on both sides of that groove. So we'll come in right over it. Little pinch. You get that deep ache? Yeah. Especially there. Yep. We want to go toward the uh, superior edge of that in thesis because most likely your patient is going to be upright for the part of the time after you inject. So you want the stuff to be able to run down a little bit, cover the rest of it. Then I'm just going to move over to the, and you can palpate the groove right there. You don't have to have imaging for this. And that's perhaps a little medial. Right there? Yep. yep. And once again, your patient will tell you when you're there by that deep aching feeling. There. Okay. 
Okay, and is this tender down in here? The attachment of the supraspinatus can go a variable distance down the humerus. Uh, we'll just come down below the ball to catch mm -hmm. it. Another good ache? Uh, yeah. Okay, well, this will be our last spot, and then you're done. Thank you. Um, if you have any questions, and I'm sure you will, uh, we'll be happy to answer them. So I know that I've left a lot of uh, questions in your mind, at least I hope I did, because uh, I'd like to hear from you. And I guess as part of this webinar, you're going to be able to phone in questions or uh, this will be presented in different formats. Um, so I'm always happy to help you get started in your injection practice. I think using Tremiel and Zeal are very safe. The risk-benefit ratio is just incredible. There's almost no risk uh, other than with the needle. Uh, but the medication, there's almost no risk. I've never had an adverse event with Tremiel or Zeal, and I've been using it for probably 25 years if not a little longer. I've had good results. Um, satisfied it, it doesn't produce the same results as uh, Canalog or Depomedrol. It works very differently. Uh, but particularly for acute problems, it's very good uh, to control that acute inflammation. Uh, swelling, bruising, very useful for that. Uh, I have many patients on the topical uh, Tremiel, and that's very effective from them. Uh, it's equally effective with uh, diclofenac gel and other topical preparations that are primarily camphor or menthol. In fact, it's usually much better than, than camphor or menthol which is primarily a distraction from the pain rather than treating in any of the inflammation. Uh, what else can I tell you? So, to, to recap, very low risk, very good benefit. So, feel free to experiment and get started with it. So, I know there's a lot more things we could talk about today, but I don't want to uh, waste your time. I'd much rather have you ask me specific questions that I could answer and we'll talk about it then. Um, so I look forward to your questions. I hope this has uh, been worth your time. Uh, thank you.